Hey everybody, welcome back to Tip of the Week. In this weekly video series, I'm going to show you different tips and tricks that I've learned using On One Photo Raw 2018. In this week's video, I want to show you how you can use brushes more effectively and correctly when editing your own photos. So let's start inside of Develop. I've started with this photo and I've basically just selected Auto on my tone and color to give it sort of a basic tonal adjustment so we're not just dealing with the raw image file itself. So the first thing I want to show you is how you can use a local adjustment brush to paint on specific adjustments to specific areas on your photo. So if we head over to local adjustments, it'll automatically add a new local adjustment layer. Once it adds that local adjustment layer, your local adjustment brush is automatically selected. There are also three different ways you can grab your local adjustment brush. You can either add a new layer, and it will grab the local adjustment brush for you. You can come over here and select the adjustment brush by clicking on this tool button here, or you can simply hit K on your keyboard. So if I head over to a different brush, and you'll notice it's a different size and it's a different brush entirely, now once I hit K on my keyboard, it pulls up my local adjustment brush automatically. You'll notice there's a few different controls at the top for your local adjustment brush. There's a mode, there's size, your feather, your opacity. There's this little brush here, which is your perfect brush. You also have your settings. You can invert it or reset it. The mode is referring to whether you want to paint in a local adjustment or if you want to paint out a local adjustment that you have already applied. So if we go to my mode here and I select paint in, I have my local adjustment here that's set to darken. So now if I paint in this effect, it's going to paint it on because I'm set to paint in. I'm going to hit Control Z on my keyboard to undo. And now if I head over to Paint Out and I brush, it's not going to do anything because I don't have any of the local adjustment applied to my photo yet. But if I head back to Paint In and I paint in this local adjustment, now if I head back to Paint Out, I can simply paint out that adjustment as I applied it already. You also have your size of your brush, which you can change the size in two ways. You can either go up here and adjust it by using the control or using this, or you can simply use the bracketed keys on your keyboard. So if you use the right bracket key, it's going to increase the size of your brush. And if you use the left bracket key, it's going to decrease the size of your brush. This is going to save you a lot of time when you're editing photos, rather than having to take your mouse up here and deal with these controls. There's also the feather control, which the feather control is referring to how hard you want your brush edge. You can either have a super soft brush edge, or you can have a super hard brush edge. So if I turn my feather all the way down to zero, and make sure I have paint in selected, so I can paint in this adjustment. If I brush it on, you'll notice that the edge is incredibly hard compared to what it was before. That's because there's no feather on the edge at all. Now, if I turn the feather all the way up and brush, the edge becomes a ton softer. It's sort of the same principle with the opacity. If I turn the opacity all the way down, I'm not going to be brushing anything on because my local adjustment brush isn't even visible. But if I turn it down to, say, 50, it's going to paint half the opacity of my local adjustment. And if I turn it up to 100, it's going to paint the entire opacity of that local adjustment, and it's going to be as dark as it is inside of these controls. The next thing we have is the perfect brush. And the perfect brush is going to separate colors and tones in your photo so that when you're removing part of a local adjustment or a mask, it doesn't remove any of the parts that you don't want to be removed. So for example, if I have my local adjustment set to darken, and I don't want to darken any of these birds, but I want to darken the background around them, I can simply select perfect brush. And now whatever is under my plus sign here is going to be applied with the local adjustment but nothing is going to be applied to these birds because it, they have separate colors and tonalities than the background in my photo. 
So now if I go into my masking options here and I view my mask, you'll notice that this local adjustment isn't being applied to the birds, it's only being applied to the background area, and that's because the birds have different colors and tonalities than the background itself. You also have your little gear button here, and this is your settings for your brush as well as your perfect brush. You can control different aspects of your perfect brush here, and if you're using a tablet, you can use this to adjust your um, size and opacity with the pressure on your tablet pen. And then the invert and reset are pretty self-explanatory. To invert the mask is going to invert the black and white aspects of your mask, and then to reset it is simply just to reset the entire local adjustment brush and local adjustment layer. Now that you're more familiar with the local adjustment brush, I want to show you the masking brush so that when you're applying different filters, you can mask and blend them inside of effects. So let's head over to effects. And you'll notice on the left hand side here that once we switch from develop to effects, it brought up a few different controls and tools that we can use. One of those tools is the masking brush tool. To use your masking brush tool, you first need to add a filter onto your photo. So if we go to overall settings, and we'll add a filter, and we'll just add a LUT to stylize our photo, and we'll just use this preset here. The masking brush is a little bit different than the local adjustment brush in the sense that you're masking out different filters and effects that you're applying to your photo, whereas the local adjustment brush, you're only masking out or masking in local adjustments. So to grab your masking brush, all you need to do is hit B on your keyboard. B for brush, it's that simple. If you don't want to hit B on your keyboard, you can head over to this button here and select it and you'll have your masking brush selected. And you'll notice at the top of the screen that you have the same controls you had earlier when you were working with your local adjustment brush. So if I wanted to paint out this LUTs filter for my photo, I could do that by selecting paint out or if you want to switch between paint out and paint in, all you need to do is hold down shift on your keyboard and hit X. And you'll notice that by doing that, it takes your plus sign to a negative sign or vice versa, meaning you're either going to paint in your mask or you're going to paint it out. So I'm set to paint out now, and if I want to paint out the mask, just like I did with that local adjustment, I can use my perfect brush and I can remove that effect from everywhere that's on my photo except for my birds. So if I go into my view mode for my mask, you'll see that it's doing the same thing but basically just inverted as we did with the local adjustment layer. Now that we've gone over a little bit on how to access your masking and local adjustment brushes as well as some different controls on how to use them, I'm going to show you how I would use my local adjustment and masking brushes on this photo to make it pop and come to life. So I'm simply just going to close out of this filter here and I'm going to undo any local adjustment layers that I've made. So the first thing that I want to do to this photo is I want to sort of increase the exposure on just the birds here without affecting the background. So I'm going to go to add a layer and I'm going to make this layer set to lighten so it increases the exposure. I'm going to make sure I have my local adjustment brush selected. I'm going to go to the opacity and turn it up to 100%. And I'm going to select my perfect brush. So let's increase our brush size. And let's just get to brushing in around the birds. And now since I have all of the background basically masked out from my birds, I'm going to take off this perfect brush and decrease the size of my brush. And then I'm just going to clean up the areas that didn't get masked out with the perfect brush. So now we have the entire background masked out. And so let's view our photo. And you'll see that the background is brighter, but the birds haven't changed. So what we can do is just simply invert this and it'll brighten our birds without brightening the background. So now that we have our birds dealt with, what I wanna do is sort of replace the sky here 
because we just have this big bland blue sky and there's not a whole lot going on. So let's go to our overall settings and effects and let's add a filter and let's add textures and let's go into categories and let's find ourselves a sky. And you'll see that once you apply this texture, it's applying this sky to the entire photo. Well, we don't want it to be applied to the birds and we don't want it to be applied to this water down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my local adjustments and I'm going to copy this mask that I use for my local adjustments. I'm going to head back to my overall settings. I'm going to make sure that I'm in my textures masking options and I'm going to paste the mask. Now that's going to paste the mask entirely onto the birds without affecting the background. But if we invert the mask, it applies the sky to the background and not the birds. And now what we can do is we can use our masking brush. We can turn it down a little bit and we can simply paint out this area that the filter is being applied to. And you'll notice that there's still a little bit overlapping right here, but I don't want to take it out at 100% because it'll look unnatural and be uneven. So if I turn down my opacity to about, I don't know, maybe like 40, 50 around there, now what I can do is just paint it out at a lower opacity to blend it more with the water in the sky. Perfect. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, you'll see that in three simple steps from simply putting on auto tone to our photo to adding in one local adjustment layer and a texture layer, we've really enhanced this photo using only our local adjustment brushes and our masking brushes. I'm Dylan with On1. Thank you so much for watching Tip of the Week. Stay tuned for more.